Is it possible that you could be praying wrong? Find out the answer right now. Well, hey everyone, my name is Dustin Barker and my passion is helping you find out who God is and who God says you are and because I want you to know your God-given identity. I wrote a book called Hello, God Says My Name Is. And if you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing below. I believe that many Christians aren't seeing full effectiveness in some of their prayer life because we may be doing some things wrong. You see, God makes things to work a certain way. For example, if you try to pour gasoline into the engine of your car, you won't go very far and you will actually destroy your vehicle. You see, you have to do things the way they are supposed to work. So let me explain. This is where we can miss it at times. When we find ourselves talking to God and praying about a mountain in our life to move, we were never taught to pray to God to move mountains in our life. Now we can pray and ask God for wisdom, but let me show you what Jesus said in Mark 11, 23. Jesus said, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourselves into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that that what he says will happen, it will be done for them. Please notice, Jesus did not say to talk to God about the mountain. He didn't say if you will ask God to move the mountain. He was teaching his disciples authority and teaching them to walk like him and to speak to the mountain. And this isn't the only instance. In Luke 17, 6, we read, Jesus replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Again, notice it doesn't say that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will ask God to uproot the mulberry tree. Jesus again was teaching his disciples to operate like him. This is how Jesus was. See, he spoke to ears and said, be open. He spoke to the wind and waves and said, peace be still. He spoke to the demons and casted them out. Jesus did make time to get alone time with the Father and pray, but he knew the difference between prayer time and taking authority and speaking to an issue. Some people might say, well, that was Jesus and he could do those things. However, Jesus is our example. He is our teacher and our guide. He never once did any of these things and then told us that we couldn't do it. In fact, in John 14, 12, Jesus said that those that believe in him, like you and me, they will do the same works that he did. And in Ephesians 5, 1, we read this, be imitators of God, therefore as beloved children. We are told to imitate or act just like God, like children would imitate their parents. Now, I will say that some people go too far with this and they think that people who teach like this think they are God or have no need of God. I wanna go on record and say that I am not God, but I am made in his image and I'm told to act just like him. I also wanna acknowledge that without him, without God, we would be nothing. And the only reason that we can do these things is because he has given us his power and his authority. So back to this subject, are you speaking to God about your issues? or are you speaking to your issues? The Bible tells us to resist the devil and he will flee. How do we resist him? Well, just like Jesus did in Matthew 4 when he used his words and he used the word of God. Let me use an example that can be seen easily by everyone. In the Bible in Matthew 8, 17, we are told that Jesus took our sicknesses and bore our diseases. He did that for us and why? so you and I could keep being sick and have disease? No, he did that so that you and me could be healed. Many Christians are asking God to heal them and praying things like, Lord, if it's your will, heal me. However, this would be like me saying, Lord, if it's your will, save me, please save me. Jesus proved that it was his will for you and I to be saved by paying the price for our sins. And he also showed us that it was his desire for us to be healed by taking on our sickness and our disease. So here's a simple change. But if my hand is hurting, I do not pray about the pain in my hand. I follow the model of my Lord and Savior and I speak to the mountain. I may thank God that his word says by his stripes I'm healed, but then I speak to the issue 
and I tell the pain to go. I speak to the hand and I tell it to be healed. This is what Jesus did when he would speak to ears and say, be opened. If the devil is trying to mess with my family, I don't ask God to get the devil to leave us alone. I thank God that we have authority, but then I speak directly to the devil and I tell him to scram. You see, this concept is all throughout the Bible. You know, God told Moses to speak to the rock. God told Ezekiel, speak to the dry bones. I heard this once and it's a very profound statement. There is a time to pray and there is a time to say. Both are important, but both serve a different purpose. I pray and that is my alone time with the Father where he instructs me in his will. He shows me things, but then as his ambassador, as his soldier, I go out and I enforce his will that he tells me about in my quiet time. Many Christians are praying about something and asking God to do something about situations where God is saying, speak to the issue. Speak to the hindrance that is trying to keep you out of God's will and don't be moved by what you see. If you speak to your hand and it's still hurting just as much as it did before, don't be moved. Just thank God that he said you would speak to it and it would work and then stay after it. Let me end with an illustration that God showed me once. If you have a wild raccoon come into your living room, how would you treat it? Would you sit back and pray? Would you sit in your chair and go, well, I guess God wanted this raccoon to be here. No, you would get up and you would take action. You would grab a broom or maybe even a gun and you would probably be yelling at that raccoon saying, get out of here. You see, God wants us to act the same way in the spirit. When weapons come against us from the enemy, we should fight back and the power of life and death is in the tongue. Our weapon is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You need to treat sickness, disease, anger, depression, suicidal thoughts, just like you would treat a raccoon that's in your living room. Take God's word and get angry with it and tell it that it has to go. If you're dealing with fear, speak to the spirit of fear, not to God about how afraid you are. So I'm not saying to stop praying, but I am telling you to stop praying and asking God to do your job. He's on your team. And Matthew 18, 18 says, whatever you bind will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose will be loosed by heaven. Take your place of authority and speak to your mountain. And if you aren't exactly sure what to speak to, if you don't know what the hindrance is in your health, your marriage or your finances, that is where you can use your prayer time. Ask God to show you what the issue is. And once he shows it to you, tell it to go in Jesus' name. Well, hey friend, I know you enjoyed this video. So for more content like this one, you can go ahead and click this video right here.